people live their lives on the surface. They have no idea the depth to existence that they could have if they would stop. The end result of hurry sickness becomes an inability to love. This is the most serious danger of hurry sickness. We race and we run and we live superficial lives and we become jaded to love. We become unable to love. Why? Because love and time are indelibly tied. We cannot hurry up and love. Love takes time. When we hurry... We lose our sense of gratitude. We lose our sense of wonder. Ottawa is a beautiful city, but you don't really experience it until you get out of the car and get onto a bike path. You have to slow down. Your spouse is wonderful, but you will not fully experience the wonder and the gratitude to God for your spouse unless you stop and truly experience them for a concentrated period of time. And the longer you go without it, the more surface your relationship comes, and then you wonder, who is this person? Because you haven't depth, you have no depth to your relationship. Jesus knew how to stop. And he did it very often. He had the most important mission in the history of the universe. By the way, anytime you try to use that excuse, it doesn't work. But I am so important, Jesus was more important, and he knew how to stop. And he did it often. When Jesus heard about the beheading of his cousin, John the Baptist, he was in the middle of an itinerant preaching journey. Bad news, right in the middle of something. What did he do? He stopped. What could he have done? Kept going, doing it, deal with it later. Put away the emotions, deal with it later. He has work to do. He could have broken down. He could have gathered himself a bunch around, around a bunch of people, told them all about it, uh, read a book and been done with it. No, he stopped. Matthew 14, 13. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Why by boat? Because people were chasing him. They wanted to be around him. The only place he could be alone was where people would have to swim out to get him. But the crowds relentlessly followed him. And Jesus, he goes and he's crossing the river and they've actually ran around the entire lake just so they can be with him. And he sees them and he has pity on them. He takes, their, takes time with them. He miraculously feeds them. And then he spends time dismissing them. Sends his disciples on ahead of them. What would we have done at that point? taking a nap, watched some TV, went with our friends somewhere. But Jesus' stop time was interrupted. So he sends the disciples away and he stops again. Verse 23, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Why on a mountainside? Because then people would have to climb a mountain to get to him. Now, why didn't Jesus keep getting swept into things that we kept keep getting swept into? Because he stopped regularly and he listened to God. When you feel like you're being carried away and the whole world is rolling over you and you're being pushed around like surf, the reason is probably because you're not stopping, you're just keeping going. And you're like a pinball, ping pong ball being bounced around. Before Jesus chose the disciples, important, important decision, he stopped to listen to what God had to say. Luke 6, 12 to 13. One of those days, Jesus went up on a mountainside to pray. He spent the night praying to God. Why at night? Because then people would have to wake up early to go find him and then climb a mountain to get to him. Why am I pounding that home? Because you have permission to do that. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and he chose 12 of them whom he designated apostles. We get the impression from the Gospels that despite Jesus' popularity, people coming to him day and night, having to deal with family matters, being a rabbi in town, 
having to train disciples, teach, preach, do miracles, travel, have all the Pharisees in, in the whole world chasing you down, and everything else that was happening in his life, Jesus was able to stop and take time to be with God. If Jesus needed to do this, how much more do we? That's the first part. 